Hello everybody, TW here. I'm gonna bring you a little something that you can do yourself. I was on the phone today with Trees of Blowing, Don, and he showed me his new 10 millimeter. And it's got some uh, questionable crown work on the muzzle of that barrel. And uh, we got to me thinking, I've never done a video on this, and this is this is something that that can be done at home with a minimal amount of tools. You can buy special balls made of brass, special tools made of brass to um, to use to crown a barrel. But you can also just go to your hardware store, and this is best for the bigger barrels. But you just take a a carriage bolt and just a little bit of smoothing to get it nice and smooth and it works perfect so we're gonna do a little 22 barrel here and this is just a cut off barrel that I, that I had shortened um, <clears throat> this is actually a Ruger 22 mag barrel I bought a Ruger bolt action 22 mag i wanted the 16 inch barrel and they only had the 22 so i got this i had a 35 caliber barrel here but i cannot find it from another cutoff that i did and i just don't know where it went so this probably isn't the best example but let's just say you've got a, a longer barrel uh something and you're shortening it down to you know 16 17 inches or something or you've got uh a barrel of something else that like Don has got uh, a questionable crown. You just want to you want to clean it up. I'm just going to stick this in the vise because it doesn't matter um, what happens to the outside. This I scratch it, whatever. But if uh, if you're doing this on something that's really nice, you're going to want to uh, take better care and make up some kind of a padded jig or something to hold your uh, hold your barrel so it doesn't get scratched. But again, we don't really care here. It's just for demonstration. So I'm just going to chuck it up in here. I'm going to start out first. I'm just going to dress this off <clears throat> because this is literally, I'll zoom you in here. This is literally um, just cut off with a hacksaw. So we're going to square that up a little bit and then uh, and then put a crown on it. Stand by. Right. I like a big, good size file. And... You're gonna, I'm going to assume that you got it pretty square and you're not going to have to uh, really true it. You're just uh, making it flat. In other words, it's going to be square. You're just smoothing it out. And I like to go in different directions. you know how to file you file in one direction not not multiple directions and by changing direction it'll allow you to uh see what you're cutting and keep it keep it flush and flat you're not you know digging here or digging there you're going to see what you've done because you can see the metal coming off i'm just going to break that edge there because I see a burr coming up, and there must be one over here too. I just can't see it with the glare. So we'll just go around there really quick and take that off, and that's that's good. We're pretty good. I just wanted to make it mostly flat. There's a couple of really big gouges in here. And again, this is just for demonstration, so it doesn't really matter. But just the same, I'll get it as nice as I can within the constraints of our little video here. 
just so that we have something that we can we can see I put glasses on myself so i can see better and you can see that i'm uh you know i put this on here and i i get an angle that gives me an angle on the barrel and then i just keep that angle and you can see it you can see it this is soft stuff clogging up the clogging up the pipe even though i'm banging it um you can see that it's cutting all the way across the barrel flush and flat and when you change angles like this you immediately see high spots and low spots and you don't need it absolutely square but it's best if you get it as close as you can at least visually square it's been proven that it doesn't need to be dead perfect square to produce good results and i can give you one example there's that uh one pistol out there 380 called the curve it was uh well it's not that old maybe 10 years old and it was brought out and the barrel there's no no hard edges on the gun the barrel is round so it's it's shorter on the top it's almost like a little comp it's it's on an angle almost like the end of an ak or some of the ak breaks pretty odd but it shoots just fine all right we're pretty good at least good enough for our little crowning session here I just wanted to remove as many scratches as I could. Let me get a little finer, a little finer file. Stand All right, by. there we go. I even hit it with a little sandpaper on the file. I want to try and get you in here closer. I've got you zoomed in all the way, but I want to get you to see really good exactly what we've got here. So stand by. Let me zoom, get you closer. Here we go. I got you a little better. Now you got an overhead view. And you shouldn't be in my way when I'm doing here. Now, I'm going to have to move you again before I get the drill in here, just because of how this is. But uh, um, let me show you exactly what we got. So we're nice we're nice and square, at least as square as we need to be for what we're doing. And you can see that there is, there's nothing there for a crown. It's just a cut-off, square, flat uh, barrel. So let's get going here with... Uh, with how we're going to do this. All right, what we've got here is just some light lapping compound, valve grinding compound. Um, you want, um, you don't want a high grit. You want a fairly fine. And this is the tool that I'm going to use here. This is a crown lapping tool for 22 and six millimeter. And you can get these from Brownells, uh, maybe Midway but I know Brownells and uh, all it is is a ball end on a brass rod. That's it. A little bit of residue later from the last time, but what we're using is out here on the very end. That's it. And you'll see, it's gonna cut it pretty quick. You just gotta go nice and easy. We're gonna use a drill motor we're going to use it on low speed. You want to make sure you got one that that will run for you at about, about like that. Because you don't really want to create any heat. You just want to cut this lapping, pound, lapping compound. You want to do the cutting for you. And it's going to make a little bit of a mess. So you got to have a, a rod with a couple of patches that you can push through here. And the important part is you're not just gonna put it on there and pull the trigger and grind. You need to make oscillations. So you're gonna start up here like this and you're gonna go like this. 
as that as you run the motor and different diameter circles so you want to do you know small little tight little circles and great big little circles uh, great big circles okay because it's going to cut differently and if you just hold it on there you'll make an oval or an octagon so you got to make oscillations and you want it to go pretty slow so it's literally what we're doing here so you're putting all different all different amounts of compound in there because you're taking it off of all different points of that ball you know little ones and you can stop and start it's not a problem you can add more compound if you need it and you start to see this really getting getting black you don't really want to stop unless you pull the ball off and varying rpms doesn't hurt the diameter of the circles is the important part and that you're always moving now your gunsmith is going to do this on a lathe but you can be do you can do it by hand. Remember, guns were made long before that there more long before there was lathes. I should have grabbed some Q-tips. Let me go grab some Q-tips and come back, and then I'll zoom in and show you how far we cut. Very simple. You don't need to be afraid of this or intimidated by this. All this is for is just to clean it up so that we can see what's going on here when I zoom you in. And it'll also show you, I should have shown you this first, but a good way to test if you've got any funny stuff going on with your, with your crown is uh, with a cotton ball or this, this Q-tip. And what you do is you just put it around here and you move it around and you pull it away. And if you've got a burr or something that's undesirable there, that cotton is going to stick to it. Now we deburred the edges here, so there's nothing out there, but we already have a little bit of a crown cut on that, on that muzzle. Now, here's a, here's something about crowns. You're going to read X degree crown, 33 degree, 25 degree, 40 degree, whatever the heck it is they come up with. That's not actually the crown that they're talking about. That's a cut that the gunsmith puts on your barrel to protect the crown. The crown of your barrel is the last point on your barrel that the bullet leaves. That is the crown of your barrel. Not the whole face that you see here. Not that dish and not, not this here. I'll show you the other, other side of the barrel. See here? This is a typical target crown. And this area this recess here is nothing more than that it's nothing more than a recess in the muzzle to help protect that crown area right there from getting hit and dinged when you you're sticking it in a gun case or you're sticking it you, you put it on your boot your shoe or whatever you're doing with the muzzle of your gun it, it protects that somewhat delicate crown from getting bird so we're not doing able to do that here and that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about cutting or breaking that rifling edge and making sure that it's true and even and smooth. So let me see if I can, how close I can get here and stay in focus for you to see what, what we've cut so far. I can't see that really good. I think I see an edge there. I'm hoping that you can see it. Maybe if I put a light inside the inside down here, it'll come up through and show better. I don't know, not really, does it? Maybe a little bit. I'm hoping that you can see that. That's about the best I can get you for light. Now you saw we only spent just a few seconds there. We can certainly do it more. Go back at it a few times. You know, clean off. Take a look at what you got. 
put more compound on there. It doesn't take a whole lot. That's all that you need. Put it on there. Again, we want to go slow. You're not really putting any weight. You're just letting the weight of the, the drill motor do it for you. And again, remember, it's important that you do different sized oscillating circles. You, know, you can do really, really giant big ones and go really slow. But the bigger you go, the harder it is to stay in the, in the hole there. And you can also see how the, com the, uh, the compound is removed from the ball there. So you want to make sure that you've got compound in there to do the cutting for you. And that is it. You're just cleaning everything up for that exit. Now, I've done this many, many times with, with always improved results in my accuracy. You can buy tools. You can rent tools um, to do this more professionally. You do not have to have a lathe. You can do this without a lathe. And you can even do a crown. Uh, you know, a tapered crown to protect your to protect your bore without a lathe. Um, uh, 4D re uh, Reamer Rentals. Fred Zeiglin over there, Zeiglin. He'll rent you all this stuff. I don't think Midway or Brownells rents it, but they do sell it. And, heck, you can even thread a barrel without a lathe now with tools that they have. All right, so let's get this cleaned out as best we can here. I brought out a, uh, yeah, it's okay. I brought out a pull-through bore snake, but I didn't really want that valve grinding compound on it. But I got most of it out with the, with the uh, cotton swabs. So let's see what we got here. All right, there you go. There you go. I think you can see that. Let's make sure this is focused where we want it to be focused. I can see it here, not looking through the camera with my naked eye. That edge. There's a there's a rifle, a rifling flute. There's a rifling flute. There's a rifling flute. So we're cut right down into that. And that right there is all you need to be able to shoot good groups and not have a problem with your barrel crown. You could do this on pistol barrels, rifle barrels, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do anything else. Um, it's a good way to see if you've you've got an issue or if you suspect you've got an issue. You can uh, do this and try and shoot the gun again and see what you got. Um, not the filing part, but just this valve grinding compound on the muzzle. You're not going to do anything to, to harm any kind of warranties with your gun because no one's going to be able to tell that you did this. You know, not even going to be able to tell that you were there. And that's the important part if you're going to seek a warranty repair of some kind. Let's say you've got a bad accuracy problem. You just want to try it for yourself. Um, if you go filing on the muzzle like I've done there, yeah, they're going to know what you did and, and probably avoid your warranty. But just, just doing what we did there to break that edge and to, to recrown this, that's all you need to do. And like I said, you can go to the hardware store and buy different things. I think this was a... I think this was a handle for a pellet gun, a bolt handle for a pellet gun, and it's just brass, so it works fine. But you can use steel, but again, small diameters, it's tough to use stuff like this. Let me zoom you out. You're going probably going crazy. It's tough to use tough like this, stuff like this because it's just too big to really stay in that crown as you're spinning it, in that uh, muzzle while you're spinning it. It just doesn't want to stay there. The, the, the angles are wrong. But when you get a ball, you know, it fits in there better. It's not as big a problem. All right, that's it, guys. This is uh, this is how I've recrowned my barrels for years. It works perfectly. Never had a problem with it. Go careful, go easy, and you can do this kind of stuff yourself. I hope, uh, I hope it was informative. If you got any questions, uh, leave me some comments. Happy to help you out best I can. God bless everybody. CW out. <laughs>